And so uh, every single year, we could be increasing the amount of computation requirement by a factor of 10. And, and now, so the question is, is how, uh, there's probably a question about why, and then there's the question of how to keep up. And, and at the core, starting with, with um, how computing is scaling, um, there was a time when software was prepackaged. That's kind of the beginning of it all. You know, we, we prepackaged the software, we put it onto a CD-ROM, we, we sold it over retail. And so prepackaged, precompiled software forced, this, forced the scaling of computers to be limited by this concept called Moore's Law. And it was driven really limited only by semiconductor physics and uh, CPU architecture. And uh, of course, we went from microcoded to pipelining. Pipelining, we went to um, uh, superscalar. Uh, superscalar, we had out of order execution and all the crazy technologies we now use for, for branching. And, and so we're looking for instruction level parallelism. And we're doing as much parallelism as we can, and we went to vectors. And the CPU architecture advanced as quickly as it could. Um, but in the final analysis, it could only make the software run as fast as it was packaged to do. And so the software was prepackaged. The thing that was a real breakthrough is when we went to accelerated computing, the software could the software package could still remain the same, but using CUDA, we could introduce new algorithms and replace the algorithms underneath, and therefore the GPU underneath um, uh, uh, at the same time. And so the benefit that brings is you, you now have a co-design benefit. It's called co-design. Basically, you have a full stack optimization opportunity. Instead of being constrained by your, your, you know, the box that you're in, you now left the box. You could architect the software, the algorithm, and the chip at the same time. And so you could optimize um, much more, much more openly. It, it allowed us to to accelerate software much, much faster than Moore's law predicted. Now, now we're doing something even more than that. And so, uh, with AI, we could of course change the precision. It's a statistical approach, anyways. You know, if you wanted to add uh, two numbers, you know, 1.1 plus 1.3, and if the answer was going to be two anyways, or you know, two point something anyways. Does it really matter how much precision you have? And so your approximation is a fine approach for AI. And so now we could, we could improve not only uh, the, the architecture, but also the quantization. And every time we went from FP32 to FP16 to FP8, we're effectively quadrupling the amount of computation or reducing the amount of energy by a factor of four. We could also change the structure of the computation instead of vector algorithms, vector approaches, uh, the computation structure is is um, much more efficient, and so we could uh, very efficiently uh, fetch and execute 32, 64, 128 uh, instructions at the same time. And so the computation structure of the chip could change, and we call that a tensor core. And now the structure of the, the computation matches the nature of the algorithm. And, and so anyways, we're uh, changing so many dimensions of computation at the same time, and now when you go into the, our data centers, we, we, uh, once you paralyze uh, an algorithm, you could paralyze it on our chip, but why can't you use multiple chips? If you can multiple chips, why can't you use multiple nodes? Multiple nodes, multiple racks. And so now, the parallelization approach um, has gone to data center scale. The government said a hidden smuggling ring was sending chips to China in defiance of American national security export control laws. The smuggling syndicate allegedly involved operatives illegal illegally entering the United States, phony front companies, and a secret warehouse shipping operation in New Jersey that was penetrated by at least one undercover agent working on behalf of the U.S. government. Now here's how the operation allegedly worked. That empty office space in Sugarland, Texas, ostensibly served as the headquarters for a company that was actually run out of an individual residence in nearby Missouri City, Texas. Federal prosecutors allege that the company purchased NVIDIA components from an American electronics firm and then shipped them to Singapore and then on to Hong Kong. In another case, a Houston-based company allegedly purchased computer components from a firm in Southborough, Massachusetts, shipped them to a logistics facility in Secaucus, New Jersey, where they were relabeled with a phony company name and shipped to a New York warehouse. Paperwork suggested the components would then be shipped on to Australia. 
An NVIDIA spokesperson told CNBC that the U.S. government's export uh, control process is rigorous and comprehensive. Even sales of older generation products on the secondary market are subject to strict scrutiny and review, the NVIDIA spokesperson said. While millions of controlled GPUs are in services at businesses, homes and schools, we will continue to work with the government and our customers to ensure that secondhand smuggling does not occur. And on the same day that federal prosecutors announced this investigation, Contessa, President Trump made a social media post that could undermine the whole operation. Trump said on True Social that the United States would now allow NVIDIA's H200 GPUs, the most powerful GPUs seized by authorities in Operation Gatekeeper, to be exported to China. Trump said those exports would be allowed, provided that the U.S. received a 25 percent cut of the sales. And the president added that NVIDIA's most advanced AI chips, the Blackwell and Rubin GPUs, are still not authorized for expert export. So that throws federal prosecutors' case into some question here. Defense attorneys for the men charged have said in court filings that the government's claim that this alleged smuggling threatened national security can't be right because the president is allowing it to happen. Contessa, back over to you. That's got to be frustrating for the prosecutors and for the investigators who went after this. Isn't the problem in the first place the smuggling, like labeling, labeling boxes falsely for export seems like that would be criminal. Yeah, it's a surprisingly low-tech uh, smuggling operation for a high-tech product. Uh, what the allegation in this case says is that there was this uh, facility in New Jersey, uh, in Secaucus, in a warehouse, uh, where Chinese operatives were going in, taking these NVIDIA GPUs, uh, and simply slapping fake labels on top of the GPUs. So they had a, a fake company they called Sankayan. That Sankayan label was just slapped on top of the NVIDIA label. And then they changed the bill of lading descriptions of what these items actually were to sort of nonsensical terms uh, to try to fool uh, export control officials at the point of embarkation. So, uh, you know, clearly it's, it's old-fashioned, low-tech smuggling. I mean, it, this is right out of like a prohibition, uh, you know, whiskey run. Uh, but th in this case, uh, this is NVIDIA GPUs going uh, to China. Do, do you know, I mean, NVIDIA chips have just been in such high demand. We've talked a lot about whether there's enough supply. How did the smuggling operation get hold of these GPUs in the first place? They seem to have purchased them from re resellers of NVIDIA gear, right? So uh, they don't seem to be purchasing them directly from NVIDIA, but from other third-party companies. Now, it's not clear in the documents because oftentimes they're referred to just as company one and company two, so you don't know exactly who they're referring to. Mm. But a lot of this seems to be more or less legitimate purchasing activity by a company that's on its face based in Houston, for example, uh, and then in reality, that company is is shipping them off offshore, even though sending uh, documents and certification to the original sellers saying this is for legitimate U.S. based pur purposes. And then out the back door, it goes to China. Eamon Javers, thank you for bringing us that update. Appreciate it.